Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. Wife of 8 years threw everything away. I've been wanting to get all of this off my chest. So please accept my apologies in advance if this is excessively long-winded. I, 30 male, married my high school sweetheart, 33 female, whom I met when I was 14 and she was 17 years old. I'm not going to lie, it felt great to be dating an upperclassman in high school. She had a vehicle, and we would often skip lunch or school to go play. It didn't last long. She and I graduated high school the same year. I skipped a couple of classes, and were headed to different institutions. She concluded it by stating she went to prom with another man, which I didn't like and broke up with her, but it turned out to be a lie. But it didn't matter since we both saw our lives heading in opposite ways. In a few years, I would have been 18 and she would have been 21. We ran into one other at concert, and I instantly ended my relationship with my so that night in order to get back together with her. She claimed to have done the same, which isn't entirely accurate. She did, however, break up with him a few weeks after we resumed having. A year later, we had our first kid together. We were both suffering financially but generally, we were extremely pleased. Our second kid was born five years later, and we had some troubles but were very much in love throughout that time. I am certain that the children are mine. We had spent the whole day traveling around visiting her parents, divorced, residences, and as the night was winding down, my father phoned and invited me to come over and speak slash drink with them and my grandparents. That sounded fantastic to me, so I told them I'd drop the kids and my wife off at home and stop over in an Uber. My wife was furious and accused me of leaving her, but I couldn't listen. I told her I was going and that it was only fair that I get to visit my family on Thanksgiving as well. She decided to leave as soon as I did. She left the children asleep in their beds and went to a neighboring pub. She met someone, they hit it off, swapped numbers, and she was observed leaving the pub with him and getting on his motorbike by my pals. There was no helmet, and the kids were alone at home, unknown to me. I didn't find out about him until a few days before Christmas, when the one-year-old woke up early and received a text message from Jay, I went back to sleep after deleting the message. When I awoke, I decided to keep a watch on her and began monitoring her Facebook and text communications. They were flirtatious and every day, she would delete everything an hour or two before I got home from work. They kept their Facebook interactions contained inside a chess game. We had just gotten into a fight the night before in mid-January because, frankly, I was behaving up. I was furious that she would leave the children out of malice. She had no clue I was hearing from friends and relatives that she was doing dodgy things and having the kids watched on days she wasn't going to school or needed assistance with them. I informed her I wanted a divorce when I woke up one morning. This was reckless, and in hindsight, I should have handled it better. She was caught off guard. I informed her that I was aware of Jay, and that if she wanted to leave, she could. I asked her to explain what had occurred. She told a falsehood. I called her out on her deception and urged her to try again. She lied in a different way, but she lied nevertheless. I told her I couldn't trust her and that she needed to stop what she was doing if we were going to have a shot. For three days, I listened in on her discussions. They didn't give up. On the third day, I snapped. I told her she had to leave my home because I couldn't stand it any longer. She cried and begged her father to come over and intervene. He didn't side with either of us but he did tell me that he had a similar issue with one of his ex-girlfriends and hoped we would find a way out, even if they hadn't. We seldom communicated after that, co-parenting but nothing more. She sat me down and asked whether I saw us as more than friends slash co-parents in the future, and I looked her in the eyes and replied, no. She relocated. I proposed that we avoid any physical closeness as soon as she went out. I didn't trust her while she lived with me, so how could I trust her now that she's on her own? She wasn't having it. She wanted to mend our relationship, and she wanted to start going to therapy to attempt to work things out, and it looked to be doing a lot of good. Until one day after our fourth therapy session, she requested me to treat her the way one of our common friends would treat her, as if she were a friend who would never attempt anything with her. I told her it sounded like she had a new boyfriend, and that if that was the case we were wasting our time slash money trying to repair us. She accused me of spying on her, which I had not been doing, and demanded that I get my own Amazon account. Come, all right? So, screw it, I logged into the account and listened to the recorded voice, commands to our Amazon devices. 
The night before therapy, she had been in her bedroom with another guy, requesting Alexa to play music. My stomach clenched. I went back in time. This man had been coming around on a regular basis. Great. Naturally, as she moved out, she quickly began seeing this other man, exposing herself and me to herpes. She says she slept with this guy the day they met, that he informed her about catching it himself during a experimenting period, and that she told him she didn't like condoms, so they were out of the question. I'd had my evidence for weeks and weeks. I approached her, but without presenting any of the evidence I had uncovered. She acknowledged to the affair and lied about every detail, and I was well aware of it. She then informed me of the herpes, and I was tested for STD. Fortunately, I escaped with my life. She began criticizing his character, claiming that he was anti-BLM, didn't believe in dinosaurs, misled her and so on. Even now that everything is out in the open, she continues to lie to me on a daily basis, sometimes about trivial matters. She is now attempting to manipulate me with her melancholy, making me concerned about her and her mental state. She wants things to be the same as they were, of course she does, but it's not going to happen. She may behave in ways that make her unsuitable for marriage, but she is still the mother of my children. She knows she can twist my arm with a few tears and raise her wounds. I've submitted all I needed to with the lawyer, and I'm hoping this divorce goes well. What should I do if I want to move on with my life but don't know where to begin? Some OP reply in this post. Could you somehow see telling her you want a divorce is rash when her entire history is a disaster? She was mad at you for seeing your family on Thanksgiving, so she abandoned her kids alone to find a random in a bar. Please, be the stability your kids need in life. She's a walking disaster. She probably has always been a disaster. And counseling with her and get it alone for yourself. Put up an emotional wall where you no longer communicate about anything but divorce and children. Suggest even taking it to text or a parenting app. You need as much distance from her as possible, and you need to be the reliable parent that your kids need. You can't help her. She's broken. She can only help herself. And she won't even attempt with you in her life. That's been proven at this point. So focus on you and your healing and getting to a place of happiness for your children. Your wife is broke and you can't fix her. So fix yourself and help your kids heal in the process. Ah. She has been a disaster for as long as I've known her, but she was my disaster, and she made me her world for a while. It was flattering and comforting. Really, it was codependency, but I was young and stupid. Depending on who you ask, I still am. I'm going to I see and working on my own issues. Now, nobody is perfect, and basically everyone could use therapy in my opinion. The kids are my focus, everything else is just background noise. Next co-man, so sad. Some people live in an alternate universe. Your ex is one of those people. Op, this is accurate. She has since told me she expected to move out for six months, then move back in. Wow, I'm a mom's boy. My mother is an awesome person, and I love my relationship with her. I don't want to take that opportunity from my boys with their mom, but as this has gone on, I'm more and more reluctant to have them spend time with her. I do not vilify her to them, but I don't lie and make her out to seem like she's great and awesome. My oldest knows there are problems, he's no fool. You won't know the details of what happened, unless the STBXW tries to vilify me. She thinks of me as the better parent, and won't likely fight me for the kids once school is back in. For the summer she wants 50-50, which is fine while the divorce is finalized. Thanks for reading.